Now, One South Africa has launched a, a, 30, a petition against uh, the 30% pass mark. It says a meagre 30% pass is hurting pupils, the education sector and the economy in the long run. Well, Musa Maimane is a Build One South Africa leader and he joins us now. Uh, Musa Maimane, thank you for being with us. First, let's get this out of the way. The education minister keeps on saying uh, that it's not 30%. Uh, you've got to look at it in context. Context, it's 40% for a home language, 50% for four other subjects, and you can get 30% for one. Thank you so much and good evening to fellow South Africans. Firstly, what she's trying to indicate is that it's a combination of marks to get a bachelor's pass rate. Now, I would wish that most of our learners would pass at a bachelor's pass rate, where in fact you have to get 50% for four subjects and uh, and a home language, but we all know that that only constitutes 20% of the learners. In the main, the pass mark they will announce in the next couple of days will be based on the fact that many of the students have to pass most of their subjects at 40% and can pass at 30%. Now, in what universe would you say a child is proficient in any subject at 30%? Mm -hmm. It is a dim view on our children and it is setting them up truly for unemployment in our country. I would not accept it for my child. I'm certainly not going to accept it for any child in South Africa. And so I think the minister is misleading us. She's only indicating a bachelor's pass, which as I've already indicated, is only part for 20% of the learners in our country. Sure. Why do you think this is there? Is this about getting a, a better pass mark for, for government? It is a certain an indicator for them that they can manipulate marks so that you can achieve an, a higher uh, percentage of students getting through. But secondly, it is a protection in a weird partnership between unions and, um, and the department where ultimately they've rejected assessment of, of teachers. Because if a teacher is capable of passing a child at 30%, why should the teacher work any hard? So it protects the job for the teacher and ultimately makes sure that the, the learner coming through is mediocre. What we ought to be asking for is an improvement in the quality of teaching that takes place and being able to assess that the best teachers stay in the system and those who are not are being weeded out because ultimately at the end of the day, if a teacher cannot herself or himself pass the matric exam, then how are they able to ensure that our kids do that? And then secondly, we have to ask better of our kids, particularly in crucial subjects like science, technology, English, and mathematics, to make sure that the number is improving progressively because we're going into an economy, as we all know, that is digital in nature, that requires the internet of things. And whether when we have learners who cannot code, who cannot do basic arithmetic, you are asking for young people in South Africa not only to be unemployed in the country, but to be global, globally uh, not competitive. So you want 50%. Is that for learners across the board, across all subjects? Certainly, and I think that we it's not going to happen with immediate effect because I understand that you've got to build it up progressively. But we have to start off by going, move it from 30 to 35, then 40% annually, and then ultimately by the time the learner gets to matric, they should be able to pass all subjects at a basic minimum of 50%. Yeah, I guess you preempted my next question. Couldn't this be very discouraging and lead to mass failure? So, so you would say that we would build it up incrementally over time? We would have to do that because recognizing that increasing the pass mark from 30 to 40 percent requires that we not only we also improve the capability of teachers, we do the preparatory work over a period of time. But all I'm asking for is for the minister not to defend the state of education. It's 70 years since the enactment of Bantu education. She must face up to the reality that in the main, the circumstances of where you are born still determine what kind of education you are going to get. And in truth, when you assess institutions like the IEB and part private schools, no child in those schools is in fact passing at 30%. So clearly this is a system designed for the poorest South Africans and the majority of South Africans who have been left yeah. behind. So it cannot be acceptable. On the other hand, I mean, if you make the bar too high, isn't there a danger that, I mean, 
some kids won't go to varsity. You talk about being internationally competitive, uh, basic arithmetic. Some people won't go on to ever use maths. Uh, they will choose more technically minded jobs, for example. Um, so couldn't you make the bar too high and then keep many of those kids unnecessarily in school for, for too long? I, I'm just trying to be a devil's advocate sure. here. No, and it's a fair and it's a very important point. But that speaks to not the assessment you use, but the type of curriculum you introduce. Because part of the curriculum issues that we faced up with pertain to saying that, sure, not every child is going to be a maths genius, not every child is going to do. But at least let's ensure that even if a child at an exit point at grade uh, nine gets to go to a TVET college, that even the assessment at that TVET college on the skill that they are doing is in fact assessed at over 50%. Because if a child ends up at a TVET college doing, for argument's sake, mechanical engineering or motor mechanics, you wouldn't want your motor mechanic only knowing 30% of how a car works. At, at least mm -hmm. at a basic level, let's accept that. Just like we wouldn't want a doctor who only knows 30%. So, so really, this is a very crucial thing and a manipulation of numbers to keep our kids lower down. And it's a lack of belief in the kind of children you have. Because to be fair, and maybe as a response to more specifically your point, is that without a shadow of a doubt, if you believe in your children and you believe they can get to 50%, they will achieve it. So it's not automated that our kids' benchmark is already at 30%. It's actually that we need to increase their capability, know that they can achieve more. And in schools, you look at schools in the country where the leadership is strong, where there's parental involvement, where the kids have good foundations to start. In the main, they do pass at 50% and it's not a problem. It is something that we, if you set the bar low enough, you are asking for the entire system to be lowered. All right, so how many signatures do you have? Well, we've been assessing it. We are in the tens of thousands, but I will be able to get the most accurate figures later on today as South Africans continue to sign the petition. All right, Mr. Maimani, before we let you go, um one South Africa started as a movement, you were supporting independent candidates and, and really pushing for um, a, a stronger reach for independence in elections. Uh, now there's a realization from your side that you will be a political party. That's the way you have to uh, enter 2024. What are you doing to, to get yourself noticed? Um, just give us some ideas uh, of your plans heading to our election. Uh, seemingly, this is a good time to really push, given the, the figures uh, suggesting a big decline for the ANC. Undeniably, I've just, as you catch me in KZN, have met with our provincial council there to be able to ensure that we spread across all nine provinces. We've already had two successful launches, not only in, in Gauteng, Eastern Cape, Limpopo, and now we'll be in, we are also in KZN. And so we are spreading across the country. South Africans are engaging us on online and digital platforms. And more seriously, as we continue to fight, particularly for learners and education, but also looking at the issues of the economy. Uh, we will be taking action against the government legally as it pertains to this issue of load shedding because it's absolutely crucial that South Africans don't feel disempowered and they recognize the fact that this is their country. We don't have a spare one coming through. And so as we mobilize society around issues that matter to the people and partner and coalesce with citizens who are committed to building South Africa, we ultimately believe that 2024 will be a significant time. It's, we can't just assume the NC will be below 50. We've got to be clear that we've got to build that majority of centrists who can build a government that works for all the people. And we certainly are working day and night to ensure not only is there growth on the ground, but we can deliver the appropriate votes come 2024. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Maimane. Build One South Africa leader.